right guys, today we're gonna to make a video on how to extract a broken key from a lock. Um, I have a couple of them laid out here. I have a commercial lever lock, a residential uh, knob, and a commercial mortise cylinder that would be on your front, storefront glass door like this one. So sometimes it can happen in a car ignition, it can happen in a, a residential door lock, it can happen in a commercial door lock, it can break off in the middle of the key, on the very end of the key, on the very front of the key. So every situation is different. So. I'll try to show you the concept behind it and maybe some of the tools and techniques that we use to get these out. And then you can take it from there and, and use that however you see fit. So let's start off with, uh, we'll start off with this one. This one's fairly easy. Like I said, it depends on where it breaks off at. So let me, I'm gonna let you zoom in real quick and see how this one looks, okay? And you can see here on this one, I can actually get behind it. So um, let's talk about the concepts first. Usually you have the shape of the keyhole, right? And when the key fits in there, there's not a lot of room around it because it's made to fit in that, that shape. But whenever we're trying to extract keys, we use what's called key extractors. Okay, so the concept is basically, if there's room, you sneak, you sneak these down the one side, maybe in, in the grooves where you can, one on one side of the key, one on the other. And then as you have them in there, you take them and then you spool them over each other as tight as you can. And then you do a wiggle kind of thing and pull out the key. That's kind of how this works, okay? I don't know if I could replicate it to where I can make it work here in this, but we'll see. So <clears throat> let's say this one, I went up to this, this is a commercial lock. Well, I could tell right away on, on this one, I'd be able to do something fairly easy. So on this one, I could probably put a flat head behind it and maybe, yep, there you go. And I'm able to get that out fairly easy. But the only reason why I was able to do that is because if you look in here, I'm gonna let you look in close just so you can see, okay? The only reason why I could do that is I have room to literally leverage off of. Okay, because of the, the lever type. So I've already got it to where I can pretty much scoop it out now. So you're not always gonna have that. Matter of fact, you're hardly ever gonna have that uh, option available, but just wanted to show you how easy it was to get it out in that case. So another situation, I'll say this right here, a doorknob, right? And I'll let you zoom in real quick and take a look at it. I may, if you notice down here, I may be able to use the same concept. Possibly, let's see. Maybe with enough, enough finagling, I might be able to do it. Let me see one more time. Okay, so let's say that doesn't work. So let's try this whole concept. Well, on this one, I'm gonna let you just look over my shoulder here and see what I'm doing. So on this one, I can get a extractor in above it. I just gotta get it to go below the pins. I can get one kind of down here in the bottom corner, maybe in the side of it, but, but not really. I don't have a lot of room. So I can probably do it with this one extractor. It's riveted and it's got little rivets on it, right? So what I would do in this case is I try to go in over the top of the, I'm basically trying to do this. I'm trying to go in enough to where I can get up underneath the pins and bounce up the pins so I can get it in here and just kind of try to pull it out. Okay, so let me see if that works with a one, one key extractor. Up and down to get the pins moving. My key actually went in deeper. Now if I pull up, I may be able to, let's see. I'm just gonna get it above the pins as far back as I can, above the pins, above the pins, raise them, bring them. And I'll try pulling down and out. Oh, look at that, it came out, see? I was gonna say, let's try it again. I was gonna say I can go down and out, push it back in. So I can go over it, over, bounce the pins out of the way. And I could try, I would have tried pulling up and out or down and out. And I think down and out works better because it's pulling against the key. So that's how I pulled it out a minute ago. Let me see if I can do it again. I'm just jamming that between the pins, shaking them up and down, getting it in there as far as I can. I'm gonna pull down and out. I'm having a hard time getting it out now, which is good, because I want you to see some of the issues that run across. So I'm just spinning this. You can spin it in there. You can bounce it up and down above the pins, and then try to pull it out that way. If you're not able to get it out that way, you can try using multiple. I'm gonna to try to get it on the side of the key if I can. But for this particular one, I can tell you right now, it's gonna be pretty much the only option is gonna be going above it like I was. And I jammed it in there way worse than it was. So see how that's in there? And if I pull up and out, didn't grab anything. So I'm gonna take this one and go above the pins again until I get all the way back there, twist, bump up and down, get me back there. Okay, I'm back there really good now, but I also pushed the key in a little farther. So because I only got one, I can't really grip like I'm supposed to traditionally. So I'm gonna see if I can get this to go in anywhere else and any other little crease that I can, which I'm having a hard time doing it. 
So I'm gonna try doing, since I've got it in there so far, I'm gonna try just kind of pulling down and, and trying to get it to just grab it a little bit by pulling out. Nope, didn't work. Okay. And sometimes, some rare times you have to just drill out the cylinder because you can't get the key out. So I'm trying pulling down and out, that didn't work. So, just to make it a little easier so I can focus on it here. Okay, I'm gonna bring this in above the pins like we discussed. Shake them up and down. Twist it if I need to to get it back in there as far as possible. Okay, I'm not really feeling a lot of grip. So you know what I'm also gonna do? I'm gonna try sticking that other one in there. Because basically right now it's just figuring out a, a way to get it to do what it needs to do. So I just moved in there. I shoved the other one in there. Um, I'm gonna give it a shot this way. I don't know if it'll work or not. Sticking them in there as far as I can. I'm overwindering them like I'm supposed to. Nope, didn't pull it out that time. So when you don't have a lot of room around the key, it can be very challenging to get it out. Let's go above that key again. And let's bring it down. Okay, moved a little bit. Came towards me. So I'm trying to bounce that in as best I can. So all I'm right now, I'm just above the pins. So if I'm trying to get another edge on it or another way of letting me in, I'm gonna have to find another groove. I'm gonna try to push the key over to one way so I can get space on the side of it. If I can just get a little space and anywhere where I can get this to grab, which I'm not having any luck. See, so still not being able to get that out. Okay, we also have some other ones that are a little different than these, but for what we're doing, this should do it, but there's just no room in this keyhole to put anything anywhere else. So, spin that back in. I'm gonna keep doing it, keep trying to get it in there best I can. And then maybe if I can just put another one in above it possibly, and then I can pull both out, down and out, and maybe I can scoop it that way. You're just trying to get leverage against whatever you're trying to do. Nope, not coming out. And sometimes, like I said, if you can't get the key out and you've exhausted all your methods and you may have to just traditionally drill it out like normal and get it out of there. Um, now, if you can get to the back of the cylinder, which I'm about to show you on a mortise cylinder, if you can get to the back of it, it's really easy to get out then. And we'll actually have people bring it in in that form, which I'll show you in a second. Yeah, so I'm having a problem getting it to, to grab anything, even though I'm pushing down and out on it. And sometimes, well, I guess that wouldn't work on here. So let me try even a flathead sometimes. It just depends on what your angle is. So I can, I can still get up under the bottom here, just barely up under the key. I mean, just barely get a piece of it. Like I said, it depends where it breaks off at. So I'm gonna get something else. Let me see what other tools we got here. So also, sometimes I get in these situations where you can't you can't get these in there, these extraction tools. So you have like, I keep spare broken picks. These are our money. So I file them down, you put them on the grinder, make them thinner so you can grab them. Broken picks have saved my life many, many times. So uh, let's try this here. So I'm just gonna see if I can get this above Underneath the, underneath the pins and over and down into a divot and just kind of pull it back. So I'm just gonna go over the top. This is like kind of my other last resort if I can't get it with the uh, traditional tools. Because all you're trying to do is grab it. I mean, there's no special anything I'm doing. I'm just trying to literally hook the piece of metal and get it out. There you go. That's how you do it. So all I did in that, thin, I uh, filed it down to a point thinner so I can get up underneath it and pull it up. So that's one way. And ignitions, this is a lot more easy to use than ignition. So ignitions, you got more room to move around and then you want to get it on say on this side of the groove and this side of the groove as far as you can in. And then once they're both in, you get them, you roll them over each other and then you kind of pull out and they come out. So that one's extracted by using a different means. The other one that comes in that's commonly done is we'll, we'll put this one in here, right? Actually, that's even a little too long, so that's gonna make it even easier. 
So give me one second here. Let's do this. Let's break off the key, but just a small portion of it, right? Yeah. Now it's not sticking out the back. We're good. Okay, so key broken off. Let's say I just can't get to it here, even though on this one, I'm more than likely can get up underneath it, pop it out, but it depends how far in it was. If it was way in like that, then I'm not gonna get underneath it. There's no room around it. There's no way I'm getting an extraction tool around that. So, I mean, you could take a little drill bit and make a little hole next to it, give you some room. I've done that occasionally when you have to, but these are in the door like this. Say it's broken, but they have the door open. Well, anybody knows how to take a mortise cylinder out. You release the set screw on the side, screw the cylinder out, right? Then if they bring it in the store, it's super easy at that point because then I'm just going to the back of the cylinder and going like this, right? And literally just pushing the key out. So if you have access to a mortise cylinder, you could easily get to the back of it. But these, and you're looking in the trade, if you're wanting to know like trade answers, then key extractors, this is what you need. They have other ones with different handles and different types different types of little mechanisms. I usually use homemade things like this because all you're, all you're thinking about in your head is a technique of, of scooping it. So if this is broken, I'm just gonna try to get in over the pins and, and try to hook down and try to grab it in one of the divots or something, you know, that's all I'm trying to do. So key extractors are your go-to. There's a couple different little key extract, different varieties of key extractors. I don't have them all. A lot of my broken picks, I convert into things like this so I can use them for this. But um, yeah, if you can get the cylinder off and a mortise cylinder out of a door, that's yeah, easy, you just pop it through the other side. If it's a residential uh, deadbolt, get around the other side, take it off, and then you could take apart the back of the cylinder. Hold on one second. You would just take apart the uh, back of the cylinder like that and then get to the keyhole and push it through. So any door that you can, if even you broke it off in your front door, but you can get in your back door, well, go in your back door, go to your front door, unlock it, take the lock off the door, take the clip off the back and push it through, very easy. But in situations like this, if you're locked out and you have to, these are the kind of tools I use. Key extractors, uh, broken picks converted into key extractors, things like that. I'm sure many other people in the trade have many different other things. I mean, you have some things like this I've created. There's all kinds of different little workarounds, but you're just trying to get in on the side of it, on the top of it and hook it and pull it and scoop it. Or if you can get access to the back of the lock, you just take it off and straight up push it out. So it's not nothing too crazy, too hard. Uh, if you're in the trade and you have some good, uh, some good, uh, suggestions for it i'm down to hear it go and leave some suggestions and say hey i use this and this and it worked great for me because to tell you the truth um sometimes it's i'm just creating some kind of tool so if, if there is anybody aware of better tools besides traditional key extractors and a broken picks and things like that definitely leave, leave a comment i'd like to hear it but uh, we appreciate the support thanks for tuning in again on guardian safe and locks uh, youtube channel we are trying to get monetized so we're doing the best we can to put out good content so we can get subscribers and and uh, people that wanna follow our content. We really appreciate the support. Please uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit the like button. You can find us on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. We're on all the social media platforms and we appreciate the support as always.